Hello grade 9 students! How are you today? I hope you are doing well and good. Welcome to another day of learning and opportunity. I am your teacher, Mom Diana Kayane. Before we proceed to our lesson, let me discuss what you are expected to know. So at the end of this module, you are expected to identify the elements of one act play, differentiate one act play and full length play, and lastly, you have to analyze a one act play as means of learning the English language. Based on the objectives of this lesson, you now have an idea that this video lesson will talk about analyzing one act play. Based on our discussion on module 5, we already defined what is one act play. Again, what is it? Very good. All your answers are correct. So, one act play is a short piece of drama that consists of only one act. So, from the term itself, one act play, it is consists of only one act. There is a complete drama within one act. Uh, it usually has one or more scenes, but does not exceed one act. A good one act play has one major problem as its focus because there is no sufficient time to deal with complex layers of blood. So this one act uh, focuses on one single problem. So that is one act play. Before we proceed to our lesson, let's have a short review of the terms in one act play. So here are your choices. Based on these words, I will be giving uh, definitions and you have to identify which word is being defined for each definition. Are you ready? If you are now ready, let's start. For number one, it is the sequence of events in the story. I will give you five seconds to answer and your timer starts now. Time's up. So your answer is very good. If your answer is blood, you are correct. For number two, it is the struggle or the problem that the main character has to resolve. Your timer starts now. Time's up. So what is your answer? Very good. If your answer is conflict, you are correct. Let's have number three. It refers to a person, animal, or even an object that takes a role in the story. Your timer starts now. Time's up. If your answer is characters, you are correct. Let's have the fourth one. For number four, this term constitutes the time, place, cultural atmosphere, and the social, political environment in the story. Your timer starts now. Time's up. So, your answer is correct. The word that we defined is setting. Very good. And for number five, we have it refers to the narrator or the one who tells the story. Your timer starts now. up who got the correct answer if your answer is point of view 
You are correct. Very good. You get five over five. You are excellent. What about four over five? Still very good. Three over five? Good. You did well in our first activity. That's a good job. And keep it until the end of this video lesson. So for your next activity, you have to draw a concept map like this one. And show your ideas, knowledge, and experience about play. So you can write your answer on a clean sheet of paper. So on the middle, you need to write the word play. And then the four boxes, fill them with words you associate with the word play. You can accomplish this activity all throughout this session. So make sure that you keep your notebook, your paper, and your ball pen with you as we discuss one app play. Let us now proceed to the introduction to one app play. Throughout the 18th and 19th century, one-act plays were written and staged as curtain racers or as after pieces. So, curtain racers or after pieces. They primarily serve to entertain the audience before the actual drama begins or just after the drama comes to an end. The staging of W. W. Jacobs or Walter Weimar, Jacobs' famous play, The Monkey's Paw, which was regarded as more entertaining than the main drama, may be said to mark the beginning of the modern one-act plays. So, W. W. Jacobs' The Monkey's Paw was regarded as the beginning of the modern one-act plays. However, it was the Norwegian dramatist Henrik Johan Ibsen that gave a modern touch to the one-act play when he introduced the minute stage directions into such dramatic form. His use of prose instead of poetry as the medium for his one-act plays brought drama nearer to everyday life. So before him, uh, plays are written in poetic form, in poetry. So he introduced drama written in prose, which was nearer to everyday life. And his style has been extensively followed by modern playwrights. So he is the one who introduced one act play written in the form of prose. So technically, the one act play derives its name from the distinct quality of having only one act that can run anywhere from 15 minutes to an hour or more. So let's have a quick check again. What is one act play? Very good. So as we defined one act play a while ago, it is a play that has only one act as distinct from plays that occur several acts. So, uh, if we will differentiate one act play to a full length play, one act play is consists of only one act, while full length play is consists of several acts. One act play may consist one or more scenes, but in one single act. In recent years, the 10-minute play known as flash drama has emerged as a popular subgenre of one-act play. Now let's have the elements of one-act play. First one, we have theme. One-act play must have a theme or thought as just like a full-length play. What is the play about? Is it love? Is it about justice, 
revenge, politics, self-discovery, whatever your choice. So it needs to be clear in your mind what is your theme. So theme is about what is the play about. Did you get it? For the second element, we have character. So there is only enough time to get to know one character and that is the hero. So the hero is the main character in a one act play. In the short time that uh, the one act play is going, it is the hero's events that the audience is experiencing. So if you are watching one act play, it is like experiencing the experiences or the adventures of the hero or our main character in the one act play. For our third element, we have plot. So the plot in one act play and the plot in full length play is uh, entirely or there is much difference between them. So for a full length play, there is a plot series, a series of plot and sequence uh, of events that lead the hero and the audience on a journey. While on the one act play, there is only one act and there is only one time for one significant event. Because it's a one act play, there is really only one time for one significant event. So, uh, in terms of plot, uh, one act play and full length play are more are much more different. Last one for the elements of one act play is the dialogue. Where do you usually hear dialogues? Where do you do dialogues? Very good. Your answers are definitely correct. So you do dialogue when you talk to your families at home. Now that you are expected uh, to stay home and stay safe, you usually do or you usually has, have conversation with your family. That is a dialogue. When you talk to your father, to your mother, to your siblings, or to anyone, uh, to any relatives you have at home, that is dialogue. But in one act play, dialogue is the lines, the words that the character say to each other. Each line must be carefully crafted to focus on the theme, the incident, and the character. I know by this time, you are already familiar with one act play as well as its elements. So for our next activity, using the words in one act play, O, N, E, a, C, T, P, L, A, and Y. You need to write relevant words about one act play. This will just be a review of how well you learned one act play in our discussion. You need to write this on a sheet of paper. Are you done with the activity? Great! Now let's proceed to our assessment. So for our independent assessment one, it's a matching type of desk. Match column A and column B by identifying the definition and elements of one up play being described in each item. Write the letter of the best answer on your answer sheet. For column A, we have one act play, character, plot, team, and dialogue. So for column B are the definitions. You just have to match the correct definition to its correct term or the element. Number one, underlying meaning of a play. What element is that? Letter B, the hero or the protagonist. Letter C, 
A play that has only one act. Letter D, line must be crafted carefully. These are the lines of the characters. Letter E, one significant event. And letter F, a play that has several acts. Did you get them correctly? Now let's check if you got the correct answer. Number one. One act play refers to letter. Very good, you got it right. It's letter C. A play that has only one act. Number two, character refers to excellent, the hero or the protagonist. Number three, plot in a one act play is a significant or one significant event very good and number four theme is the correct underlying meaning of the play and finally dialogue is the correct dialogue is the line that are that must be crafted carefully to be in line with the theme the characters and the incident in the wind up play you are really doing great job keep it up by this time i know you are already familiar with one act play and its elements so it's time for you to reflect on what you have learned after taking up this lesson by completing the chart this one in two to three sentences so let's have a quick recap of today's lesson. So one act play is a play that has only one act as distinct from plays that are several acts. So the elements of one act play are theme, character, plot, and dialogue. So theme is the underlying meaning of the play. What is the play about? Characters, who are the characters? Who are the heroes in the play? Plot are the events, the significant event in the play. And finally, the dialogues, the lines that the characters deliver which are crafted carefully to be uh, in line with the theme, the characters, and the incidents in the play. Thank you for joining me in this video lesson. Again, I am Ma'am Diana Kayanan, your English 9 teacher. Keep safe and God bless.